Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your kind introduction. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, well, a special thanks to the people and to the team of the uh, Holon Institute of Technology for their hospitality. So, uh, I would like just to present you some ideas about, uh, uh, and some experience about uh, the university uh, high technology uh, and the idea of uh, having inventive engineering uh, uh, finalize it to the economic growth because this is one of the main points, uh, 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 especially in uh, Italian policy in this moment. And uh, so the main point is that uh, we think that university can really cooperate uh, uh, together with industry and uh, has a real chance of uh, introducing uh, new elements for novelty uh, in the economic growth. So, what are the main points, in my view, of the future-oriented research activity? Uh, they are two, essentially. The first one is uh, a strong scientific originality, and this is something that is important not only because of, of course, of the scientific value that uh, uh, we recognize to the originality, but it's very important also on the side uh, of uh, the creativity and, uh, on in, and on the invention side. The second point is the capability for technological advances. And this is something that is also related to the possibility of funding uh, the research. So originality in, is indeed a crucial issue. So uh, especially in this moment, the so large uh, amount of research, and in particular of papers, uh, also related to the pressure of uh, editorial policies, uh, makes frequently them uh, uh, weak in their originality with uh, the absence uh, of substantial innovation. This is something that uh, uh, if you talk with the people uh, working in research, it's something that uh, uh, is felt. The second point is technological implication. Uh, the generally, universities in this uh, period uh, have... Uh, uh, problems with fundings, uh, and uh, this is a general problem uh, that uh, any university uh, have. And so uh, frequently this uh, problem orients uh, to incremental innovation instead uh, of uh, having uh, step innovation. So just some notes. So the need of strong originality uh, is initially inspired by purely scientific reasons, but uh, as indeed also a technological appealing. Uh, in fact, especially in engineering uh, community, as today the need uh, for looking uh, uh, at new ideas, uh, uh, demanding for step innovation, so a very uh, big step uh, in technologies, uh, indeed, uh, of uh, uh, having uh, small incremental uh, innovation, and uh, indeed on the specific ground of the invention. And uh, this need uh, has also its implications uh, in terms of social and financial effects. So look at this uh, picture. So we want to just to, to, to uh, give a picture of the, of the situation. So on the x-axis, you have the application capability of the research that is developed. And the y-axis, you have the social impact, meaning uh, uh, in terms of uh, even of uh, um, uh, economic uh, implications. So uh, at one side, uh, we have the, the, the field of scientific discovery means that the application capability is uh, reasonably low, but you have uh, a very big impact in terms of knowledge. And then this is uh, uh, indeed the field for fundamental research. On the opposite side, you have uh, indeed uh, innovation with uh, a high capability uh, of application uh, and uh, the ability of uh, technology invention. So frequently, uh, the academic research um, is uh, placed in between. So actually, uh, you have uh, that uh, a very few amount of research really lead to a scientific discovery, and uh, at the same time, uh, you have not the capability of a real technological innovation. So say that uh, 80, 90 percent of what is done in, uh, in academic uh, research is placed just in the middle. The middle has, of course, uh, is important, uh, but in some sense, we are losing something. One can think that uh, today the inventive and the creative, the creative activity is a little bit depressed. Let's uh, uh, take a look at some elements. Uh, 
So the first point, uh, these are just symptoms. Inventors and great scientists have less fame than in the past. I would like to show you something that uh, can suggest this idea. Uh, today, the teamwork uh, is uh, the universal key to approach technical problems. In some sense, individuals uh, are discouraged to operate uh, without the support of the group. This is something that uh, has uh, some deep historical reasons, and then we would like to investigate this point. So large industrial organizations, frequently multinationals, uh, actually control the technology market, and finance controls the large industrial organizations. This is one of the reasons why the individuals that want to operate creativity uh, into research uh, have some problems. So just take a, a short look at the past, because uh, we are the result of a previous history. So if you look at uh, the, the technology, the book of uh, History of Technology, you have fundamentally three ages in modern technology and invention. So the early times, uh, inventors, the so-called inventors of states, and this is uh, uh, the period, the characteristic period that you have, the first century. The second is the age of inventors and business leaders. So in that uh, age, you have inventors, so the say that the, the people that had the scientific and the technical capability to invent something is the same people that is the business, the, the business leader of uh, uh, its own company. So the third age is the age of big companies, so essentially after the Second World War, up today. So the early times uh, uh, in the inventor stage, it is characterized by the fact that for the first time it was understood that science is a powerful uh, motor for technological innovation, for technology and engineering intended in a modern sense. In a modern sense. And uh, uh, this is the time of the, the first school of engineering, like for example the Ecole Polytechnique, l'Ecole du Gène Militaire. Uh, and uh, uh, James Watt is one of the most representative inventors of this age. The second age is indeed characterized by uh, great inventors that uh, have a good uh, scientific skill. They use, uh, this is a very important point, systematic experiments, uh, and these systematic experiments uh, are developed in well-organized labs in which a large number of uh, engineers, physicists, cooperate, working to create their own companies. There are very famous names like Edison, Marconi, Siemens, Eastman, Westinghouse, Zeiss, very, very famous names. Uh, and uh, the, the, the good point is that, that the method that they invented, so they invented a method to produce innovation, was so powerful that companies largely survived to them. And this is uh, actually the, the, the seed uh, of what is the organization of innovation in our society. So the organized teams uh, and science are the new motors uh, of industrial development. And uh, this is the actual age, the age of big companies that was uh, exactly born at that time. So we have two points. It seems individuals plays, play a less significant role with respect to the past age, and inventors sink into the anonymate in some sense. I would like to show you something later. And inventions, uh, it is uh, clear by, by the history, that inventions in all the three ages were the motor of uh, an extraordinary social prosperity and economic growth. So it seems that uh, innovation, inventions, is something that uh, we have to, to encourage just to, to to have uh, a better prosperity in the, in the society. So this is a, a, a very nice uh, table that was uh, taken by a paper. The title of the paper is just uh, at the bottom of the page. Where have the great inventors gone? Then there is a, a comparison, just a just few numbers, but to have an idea. Uh, you have on the left-hand side uh, recent inventors and recent business leaders. And on the right side, uh, you have indeed uh, uh, 
uh, inventors uh, of 100 years ago and business leaders of 100 years ago. And uh, here the authors uh, uh, counts uh, the number of New York Times articles uh, during the person's lifetime. And it appears that uh, uh, in the past, these are the, 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 the list of uh, the top five people in uh, each category, so that uh, uh, 100 years ago, uh, despite uh, uh, the uh, uneven, say the, the uneven uh, possibility in terms uh, of, uh, uh, of publication, in terms of diffusion uh, of the names, you have uh, much more uh, citations in, uh, in, the, in the magazines uh, for, the, for the old inventors with respect to the new ones. Just a quick test to, to confirm this, this uh, idea. Who knows who is uh, Vladimir Zwarikin? Or who knows Mary Cooper? Who are them? Who are they? I'm sure that nobody knows. Maybe <laughs> you, because you are from electronic engineering. But uh, uh, this is just to, to tell you that uh, it is true that uh, very important inventors are destined to the anonymate recently. So the first guy is the inventor of the television, in the modern sense, is the guy on the left. And the second guy is uh, Morris Cooper, that is an inventor of the cell phone. So the first one was uh, the head of the research and development division at RCA in, during the, 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 the years uh, 2030s. And the second one was the head of the R&D division at Motorola and, uh, in the 70s. So that there are two important guys in the sense that the social impact that, that, that is related to their activity is very important for us. We deal with their invention every day, but their names are nothing. So this is just the idea. Do we need a new age for business based on uh, university high tech? So I would like just to submit to your attention some elements. The first one, academic engineering research, in my opinion, must be more inventive. This is one of the the element. The second one is uh, we have to teach to invent. It is something that uh, it is not easy, but uh, it is not uh, impossible. So say that creativity uh, is uh, an attitude uh, like uh, others. So in some sense, uh, if it is not trained, it doesn't grow up. But we have to train this ability. We have to train in the young people the ability to invent. Of course, uh, you cannot design on the table an inventor. That's clear. But what is possible to do is uh, that you have the talented people that ha have this attitude. We can train them in order that they will become inventors. The third point, makes a new strategy to involve industries in step innovation because uh, they are reluctant, generally, to be involved in step innovation. They prefer to, to be involved in incremental innovation because it is more, is less risky in some sense. So but we have to uh, fight against uh, some resistance, and this is important to understand what are the main points uh, that makes this process not easy. Look at the first. So academic engineering uh, uh, should be more inventive. So what is uh, the position, frequently, um, of the people that work uh, in the academy? It is risky. So to be innovative, to be inventive is risky. There is another point that is very important that we have to, to think about. If you want to be inventive, probably you have to lower your rate of publications. And this is something that uh, people that work in the university, I am one of them, I know very well what are the, the, the points that are important for the people that work uh, in the university. So, are really they uh, evaluated because they are inventive or innovative? No, generally, this is not the point. So they are evaluated in, in terms of uh, publication and scientific publications, mainly. 
this is something that we have to think about because uh, if it is not one of the key elements for the evaluation of the of the people working in some place, it is in in some sense uh, uh, not reasonable that you expect that these people work in that direction. So we have, I, I think, we have also to change the rules. The second point, uh, teaching how to invent. It is risky, even this activity, because uh, the effect is to lower the rate of standard knowledge that is delivered to the students. This is something, of course, because if you want to teach to invent, you have to cut something else. And this is something that uh, uh, people, professors, uh, uh, do not like uh, very much. And another objection it is uh, frequently uh, met. People say it is impossible to teach to invent. I'm not, I disagree with, the, with this statement. The third point is that Mike makes a new strategy to involve industries in step innovation. Again, it is risky because, of course, uh, step innovation uh, produce uh, a sort of uh, technology revolution. It is expensive. It is difficult to account the implication for the combination market and technology. Uh, but uh, I would like just to, to very shortly look at how, at how we can try to implement this, this point. Um, about the academic engineering, I think that uh, uh, we have in part changed the rules, as I mentioned before. Uh, the second point is, is that we can uh, introduce, uh, uh, as in some example that I would like to show you um, in a moment, uh, innovative concept design that is characterized by multidisciplinary and cross-fertilization. So you have to develop pro projects in which uh, uh, you involve people from many different uh, uh, branches. Then teach to, to, to uh, the new generation of inventors is possible. And uh, generally, this is the experience, you are able to capture the students' best energies. So it is true that you are cutting something, but the effort that they can uh, invest in this uh, activity is much higher with respect to the standard that they can, uh, uh, that they can put in, uh, in a standard, say, uh, course. The third point makes a new strategy to involve industries in step innovation. So we need a, a sort of moral suasion of industries. But this is, uh, say, it is difficult, uh, especially when uh, there are not public funds involved. But for example, when you have public funds, because uh, you have uh, regional funds, uh, uh, government funds, uh, even when you have uh, European funds, then in this case, the moral suasion is much more effective, and then we can uh, convince them to accept uh, a, high, a higher risk in the sense that you can, say, force them to participate to projects in which the, 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 the standard uh, uh, technology is left, and they are addressed to move uh, to the step innovation. In this case, uh, when you have uh, public funds it is a reasonable, um, a reasonable uh, rule because, of course, uh, the government funds or the public funds uh, reduce the risk that the industry um, has to take because uh, the investment is not uh, completely private. So uh, about that, about these three points, and this is something that uh, uh, would be nice to discuss with you. We are starting a project that is uh, called uh, Night Project. And it's new ideas and technology in engineering. Uh, meaning that we uh, are starting a project uh, involving uh, several universities in Europe uh, in which we will organize uh, in a short time uh, international round tables uh, about some uh, uh, specific and say uh, very new research uh, subjects and at the same time we would like to involve in these roundtables industries in order that they can take advantage of these new ideas in order that uh, new ideas also for the application of these technologies can be uh, produced. 
Uh, I would like just to show very briefly uh, some research activity uh, that uh, we are, I have five minutes more? Yeah. Okay. Uh, some research activity, uh, activities uh, uh, in my lab, that is the Vehicle Dynamic Lab, just to show you what I intend for technology platform. So these are uh, vehicles that are uh, designed uh, uh, and uh, realized in my lab. So as you can see, uh, we have complete vehicles. Why complete vehicles? Because uh, the vehicle is uh, per se a sort of uh, uh, technology platform in which you can combine very different technologies from electronics, mechanics, uh, uh, say new technology for materials, sensors, so many things that you have uh, to combine on board. At the same time, and this is something that uh, it is very important for, for, the, for the team that is working uh, on this project, you have, uh, say, a new concept design for the, for the whole vehicle. Uh, so it means that uh, uh, you are very close also to um, the, the interest of the industries. So, Industries can uh, interact with you in a much more effective way if they see at the results, the final results that you are proposing. So these are not only equations, drawings, but at the end you can show something that is working and uh, the complexity of, this, uh, of these vehicles uh, is, very, is very high because these are vehicles that are designed in uh, each part and subcomponents uh, with um, uh, and uh, in extreme effort. So the mission of this, uh, uh, of this uh, lab is technology development characterized by step innovation. So in the field of vehicle, dynamics, car, marine vehicles, airplanes, or non-conventional vehicles. So the subjects are very interdisciplinary. And uh, uh, so you have new concepts, vehicle and subsystem, smart sensing, uh, uh, monitoring and diagnostics. Uh, dynamic response, uh, vibration, acoustics, uh, propulsion system, of course, modeling. So these are some projects in progress uh, on the vehicle technology platforms. It means that uh, each technology platform uh, hosts many projects in which uh, industries, uh, university teams uh, uh, are involved. So you have the names of some of them. Uh, and I would like just to, to show you one of them, C-Lab. So we uh, are a team, I am the director of this, uh, uh, of this uh, project. So the mission, the original mission, is uh, to uh, conceive a new high-speed vehicle, marine vehicle. So it is over 200 kilometers per hour on rough sea. So in this condition, generally, you, you, cannot, uh, um, you cannot navigate. And uh, inside we have more than uh, 10 some projects that are led by the university but with the corporations uh, of many industries. Uh, and uh, you can have new sensitive technologies, new materials, new propulsion systems. So the characteristic is that, is that uh, the project is a cross-disciplinary. Uh, the university has the leadership and the industries cooperate and uh, the funds are mixed, so we have uh, European Union funds uh, through the region, the lands, uh, university grants, uh, and private contributions. Uh, it is an open project, this is an important thing, so uh, it means that we are able to involve uh, new partners uh, if they want that uh, their technology is hosted on board, uh, and so, so we can cooperate to develop uh, uh, their own uh, sub project so just to show you th these are th this is the, the the face of concept design meaning that uh, in this part we have creative freedom uh, exploring new solutions I would like to, to tell you that uh, in the in this case we we uh, try also to involve uh, students so students can uh, be involved in this inventive activity, meaning that they can design directly together with us many of these, uh, of these uh, vehicles. And then you can see that this is uh, what, we, what we can call the concept design phase in which uh, so the fantasy uh, plays a role. And these are 
details uh, and ideas uh, that at the beginning are just on the paper. Then we pass to the design of the new technology. In this case, of course, there is a lot of mathematics, uh, a lot uh, of uh, typical engineering activity in order to uh, bring into uh, feasible technology something that was uh, uh, the original idea. So the third point uh, is to pass to, to, to realize the new technology. Of course, uh, one of the points that uh, is frequently mentioned about that is that uh, this kind of process needs money, of course, is, a, is an expensive process. But at the same time, uh, it is a virtual process because uh, we need money, but uh, a, a, a relevant part of this money comes from private funds. And then you can see that uh, we can pass from uh, innovative idea to, to reality. Uh, so for example, as you can see in this picture, uh, these are the, the new engine for, the, for this vehicle. These are so probably the, the smallest uh, gas turbine engine that uh, are available. And uh, these are the drawings, the original drawings, but uh, on the right hand side you can see our engines that are uh, in the lab for the testing. Uh, and uh, of course it is an expensive process, but uh, everybody that is involved in the, in the process uh, uh, has uh, the possibility to follow the whole process, uh, starting from the new idea up to the uh, realization, the technical realization of the system. I would like just to conclude uh, with uh, a very nice uh, sentence, in my opinion, by Edison. So Edison was uh, interviewed by um, a newspaper writer. And uh, when this guy asked to Edison, what is the secret of your activity? And he said, it's just a very simple mixture. I have genius that is 1%, meaning that 1% uh, is inspiration, so creative inspiration. And the rest, 99%, is transpiration. So I have to work much in order to, to obtain this result. This is a quite important uh, sentence because uh, there are two elements that are indeed characterizing uh, the actual situation. So Edison was one of the inventors that invented uh, the method in order to gain innovation. And uh, at that time, he was concentrated in 99% of transpiration, meaning you need uh, a very strong organization in order to get your result and to put your idea, ideas into uh, industrial result. But of course, there is 1% uh, of inspiration. And without is inspiration, of course, nothing can be uh, produced in terms of innovation. So I suggest that we have to move in order that we do not forget that 1%. Uh, I think that's uh, more or less, it's everything. Thank you.